Да. Окей. Today's talk is the continuation of Polina Zakorka's talk about Jones polynomial, FK invariant, and not correspondence. Yeah, so last time I hope we almost finished with Jones polynomials. And today I'm I'm quite sure that we'll come to both FK invariants and not correspondence and also home fly polynomials. So the last thing about Jones polynomials that I didn't tell uh, last time, but I think it's uh, necessary for, for this talk is the skin relation. Uh, it's, so it's, uh, on one hand, it's another way to define the Jones polynomial uh, on the other hand, it's um, some property for the definition we had last time. So it's a relation which allows to compute uh, the Jones polynomial, and it's look like this. So last time we had Jones polynomial uh, which was a polynomial in variable A. And today we will have two other letters T and Q. Uh, so now I'm writing the Jones polynomial in, in, in T. So th this is the relation we have. And we also have some normalization. Sorry, Anya. Многочлен Джонс – это инвариант узлов из зацеплений, ориентированных узлов, ориентированных зацеплений. Его можно определять по диаграмме узла или, соответственно, зацепления. Но даже если мы начинаем с узла, то в процессе вычисления многочлена Джонса все равно в какой-то момент появляется зацепление, многокомпонентные узла. И вот это вот скейн соотношение, которое позволяет разрешать двойные точки в диаграмме. Разрешать двойные точки в диаграмме, так что мы заменяем проход на переход. А этим способом можно любой узел свести к тривиальному или к набору тривиальных. Окей. Okay. Yeah, so th this is some, some, some rule that allows to simplify the knot. Uh, one can check that the definition that was last time indeed satisfies um, th this relation. Uh, so why, why do we need? Yeah, so, so, so what we get here, we got a polynomial, we get a polynomial in, uh, with integer coefficients. Uh, and uh, in, in t plus minus half. So it's not indeed a polynomial, but instead a polynomial of these variables. Um, yeah, so why do we need this relation? Uh, simply because we can generalize it and obtain another not invariant, which is called on fly polynomial. Um, sorry. So it's another not invariant, more general one. Uh, relation for, for, for this. Um, so first of all, what is it, right? It's a polynomial in two variables, A and Q. That satisfies the similar skin relation, but just instead of these uh, two letters, we have a to the power one half. And the, the, same, the same thing stays the same. The, 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 I don't know what I said. Yeah, so 
we have new variable q, which is actually the, the, the same variable as before. They just, one is the inverse to, to another one. Okay, so we have this relation and there is a theorem that, which said that there is a unique polynomial P up to normalization, which satisfies this more general skin relation. Uh, yeah, so usually you have, again, the normalization, uh, which just said that on unknot you have one. Uh, and you can notice that if you put Alina, A uh, equal to... Alina, let me comment. Uh, yeah. Uh, но вы хотите, если вы стремитесь определить инвариант узлов, вы хотите, чтобы эта функция была инвариантна относительно э, движения радиомассы. Вот это свойство, что она э, действительно является функцией на узлах, что она, сохраняет, э, что, э, она сохраняется при движениях радиомастера оказывается очень ограничительным. Всякий такой очередной шаг направления в построении э, такого инварианта – это э, шаг, на самом деле, очень большой, как правило, э, глубоко нетривиальный. Хотя само по себе доказательство, вот мы что-то написали, уже потом доказывали, что оно э, удовлетвор... э, сохраняется при этих самых движениях, обычно делать несложно. Если уж мы что-то правильно написали. Но написать что-то правильно, вот это вот большая проблема. Окей. Okay. Yeah, so I wanted just to give an a remark here that for, for Jones polynomial we had some nice definition with uh, simply, we, we just had this uh, um, Kaufman bracket, which allows us to Uh, define the Jones polynomial. So for home fly polynomial, there is no such thing. So it's quite an obvious that the relation we have here is indeed well defined, as Sergei Konstantinovich said. So it's like uh, some complicated theorem to prove here. Yeah, but so, but what we're saying here is that some kind of in, not invariant which is a um, more general one than um, Jones polynomial. And uh, if we put instead of a, a Q square, then we indeed, so th this relation will be just the, the one we had before. And this will be just Jones polynomial. Uh, so it's one type of um, general generalization we can have here. So another one is FK invariant. Uh, for which, yeah, this is okay. For which we even do not know whether it's indeed exists for all the not K. But the conjecture is that there is some kind of another kind of uh, not invariant into variables. But to, to go in that direction, I first need to say something about like, the third kind of generalization of Jones polynomial and uh, Homfly polynomial, which is the uh, colored Jones polynomial and colored Homfly polynomial. Because we need to know what it is in order to define, um, in, in order to say how one can think about these FK invariants. 
So what is arc colored Jones polynomial? So I will give um, a precise definition. I just say some words around here, around this definition. Uh, so last time we have seen, we saw that Jones polynomial is somehow related to the, the algebra SL2. We had some physics explanation for, for this and we had some representations uh, yeah, but you don't need to remember this. Uh, so R colored, R colored Jones polynomial is a way to uh, obtain some not invariant from the representations of SL2 Lie algebra. So for SL2 Lie algebra, uh, for, for each dimension, we have precisely one uh, irreducible representation of this dimension. Uh, and therefore, all the irreducible representations can be parameterized by the natural number, which, which, is, which stands for this R. Maybe R plus minus one, I don't remember what exactly this R means. And the, the usual um, Jones polynomial uh, corresponds to the uh, usual representation of SL2, which is just matrices uh, two by two with trace zero. And the way one can obtain uh, this colored Jones polynomial comes from air matrices. And, and rays. So each node one can draw as, as a braid and then one can close this braid. So what is a braid? So it's some kind of pictures like like this. Um, no, it's not even. Начнем матрицу. Это еще один способ конструировать инварианты узлов и зацеплений. So, braid is some something that looks like this. So we have one one strand somewhere above, one on one strand down, and we have n points on each strand. And then we draw the, these lines, which shouldn't intersect. We always know which one is about the other one. So it's like a node, but with, with um, like, not is a circle which is embedded in Rn, uh, I don't know, R R3. And here we have uh, just lines. And uh, so each node, it's a theorem. So each node can be obtained from a braid, from some braid by closing its ends by closing it in this way. Значит, несложно доказать, что всякий узел можно получить, замыкая некоторую косу. Есть. Поэтому изучение коса, изучение узлов и зацепления очень близки друг к другу. Yeah, and braids are really nice because it's a group with some uh, Generators of, of two kinds, like this one, this one. Uh, no. So this is called. Yeah, 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 This is sigma, then this one. Minus, minus one. And then we have 
if we have endpoints here on, on the strand, then we have i can be from one to n minus one. And this this generates the brain group, and there are some relations there. So we I'm uh, maybe it's okay, maybe it's good to, to write them down. Maybe I, I'll do it in a second. So it's a really nice structure and powerful tool to uh, think about not. Okay. Oh yeah, I need to write it. Yeah. So okay, so now if we have some knot, we can draw it in the following way. So it's almost like like we draw this picture. Um, I don't know, I need some example. So we'll construct it from the simple simple lines, simple elements, which are the following. Uh, this one, this one, this one, this one. So what is this? So I can draw again the, this picture, which I which is the closure of um, of the brain. And I can split it into some levels. And at each level, I will have these um, simple, simple elements. Um, each element is one. Значит, мы можем разрезать такую замкнутую косу на кусочки. На, который, на каждом кусочке происходит что-то элементарное. Вот, э, набор элементарных картинок тут нарисован. Э, и э, всякую косу замкнутую мы можем разрезать на кусочки, на конечное число таких кусочков и исследовать, и конструировать варианты узлов просто из... Э, просто задавая, что происходит в каждом элементарном кусочке. Есть элементарный кусочек. Мы говорим, что в нем должно происходить, а потом склеивая результаты вот этого самого происходящего. Там бывают локальные максимумы и минимумы перекрещивания, и, или ничего не бывает. Это, это просто стрелочки. Окей. And then for, for each, for each, um, so for this picture, we will construct some not invariant. What is the procedure? So for each this orange level, we will have some vector space, and between these levels, we will have some maps. And we have some. Um, specific levels, like the first one and the last one, where we have no intersection points with our knot. And there we'll just put vector space C. And, uh, and between there will be something more complicated. And what we will get at the end is just the composition of these little maps. And in total, they give the map from C to C, which will depend on Q, which is precisely this variable. And it will be some polynomial of Q, which depends on the representation we have here. Like we, we, all these little maps between the orange levels, they depend on the representation. And so how we how do we construct this this small maps uh, between each each level? Uh, so we need first to understand how 
we construct this for, for the elementary part of the node. And we choose, we choose some vector space V. I need to draw it somewhere. Let's take the, the most important uh, simple part. So for each intersection of the level with the node, we put vector space either V, V or V star, which is just the dual of V. And so how do we decide whether we put V or V star? It's quite simple. So if we intersect the level going up, then we will put V. And if we intersect the level going down, then we put V star. So for this simple crossing, we just have all the lines going up. Therefore, everywhere we have V. And the map we have between these two levels is the following. So it's some map between V tensor V to V tensor V. Um, and here we have to choose some matrix R, which uh, I believe defined somehow, in, there, there is some way to define it if we have some representation of SL2. Um, and the, the, this is called, this is exactly the R, mat R matrix we, um, we, we have here. And then for the opposite kind of intersection, so we again have some map V tensor V to V tensor V. But here we will have uh, R to the power minus one. What is the dimension of the vector space V? Oof. Uh, I, like, I, I think, did R know? Yeah, probably if, uh, if you consider the R. Yeah, so it, it, reducible representation yeah, it's, so two. Yeah. Yeah, so it somehow comes from, from the representation of a sort of Yeah, so V is. В нашем примере мы задумываемся сначала каким-то непреводимым представлением алгебры Ли СЛ2. Алгебра Ли СЛ2 замечательна тем, что у нее в каждой размерности имеется одно непреводимое представление. Не важно, что такое непреводимое представление, важно, что для алгебры СЛ2 у нее в каждой размерности такое одно. Поэтому мы, если мы задались каким-то непреводимым представлением, то э, мы знаем размерность нашего пространства и с одной стороны. А, а с другой стороны, если мы знаем размерность пространства, то у нас заведомо заданное непреводимое представление. Вот. И... Э, для каждого такого непреводимого представления мы строим R-матрицу. R-матрица, она отображает квадрат этого непреводимого представления, квадрат векторного пространства V в квадрат тензорный. Это уже векторного пространства V. Окей. И, и собственно, вот вся эта картинка состоит в том, что мы эти R-матрицы поэтажно перемножаем и в конце концов получаем некоторые эти арматрицы зависят от числа Q от переменной Q и в конце концов мы получаем некоторую матрицу 
которая преобразовывает нижнее векторное пространство, то есть просто c, верхнее векторное пространство, то есть тоже c. Поэтому эта, векторная, эта матрица – это просто константа, но зависящая от q, функция от q, которая является исконным инвариантом. Значит, у нас помимо R-матриц, которые отвечают за склеивание, за перекрещивание ниточек, есть еще дополнительные Тривиальные матрицы, которые отвечают за максимум и минимум, которые э, позволяют менять количество ниточек. Из нуля делать две, а из двух наоборот ноль. Окей. Да, so and then if we know how everything works locally, we can have this global map. Just on each level, we will say that here we have this star, and here we have a V, and here we have negative V, and here we have this star, and we take these standard products all between these vector spaces. Mm -hmm. And we know locally how, uh, what is the map from C to the first uh, tensor product and the second tensor product. So we know how she goes to both of them. And, and we continue you, doing this. Maybe you'll write out an example of GR matrix. So that. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Example of R matrix. Uh, no, I, like I've seen one, it was four by four and I don't remember it. Yeah, it's yeah. R-матрица отображает тензорный квадрат пространства V, тензорный квадрат пространства V. Значит, если у нас пространство V имеет размерность R какую-то, то его тензорный квадрат имеет размерность R квадрат. Поэтому матрица, R-матрица что-то довольно чудовищное. Размерность R квадрат на R квадрат. Но если мы берем стандартное представление алгебры VSL2 пространство в двумерном пространстве, то нам нужна матрица 4 на 4, и она, в общем, носит вполне обозримый характер. Ее, ее не так уж сложно написать, а Полина просто решила, что и это слишком сложно, но матрица на 4 на 4, мы как-нибудь в чем будем разбираться. And it wasn't just necessary for this talk, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I can say some something about this also. So... Um, yeah. So, what, what the problem we have here? So, we cannot just take an arbitrary R because we want to obtain the not invariant. And not invariant should satisfy every domain removes. And the important domain remove we have looks like this, the, the third one, right? Oof. Uh, so, mm. I think I, So if we have this part in our bridge, then it should equal to this thing. And this is the, the break relation. So in terms of the generators we had before, it just looks like this. And this is the same as for the maestro move. And this gives some restriction on how 
the matrix R, R should look like. Uh, yeah, because we can divide here by by two additional levels. And on each level we have V tensor V tensor V. Uh, so we have a map from from uh, the first level to the next, to the last one. And we have two different ways to write the same the same map, right? So since since we want to since we want these two braids be equal, we want also to these two compositions of, of maps be equal. And on each level we we have uh, this kind of uh, map. So here we have uh, maybe I didn't write it in. Is there is it okay? Okay. Yeah, I think I think I need a little bit to change the way I uh, draw this Daniel? relation. Yeah, it's it's correct, but okay. Okay, I can write it like this. But it, it will с двумя соседними сомножителями. И эти два соседних сомножителя здесь можно выбирать двумя способами. И вот это вот самое уравнение, э, уравнение косы, э, braid relation, оно переписывается как уравнение, которое называется уравнение Янда Бакстера. Да. Матрицу, вот матрица должна быть устроена так, что выполняется вот это соотношение. Сначала мы действуем от матрицы на первую пару сомножителей, а э, третью оставляем неизменным. Потом на вторую, на вторую, э, на первую оставляем неизменным, а действуем на втором и третьем. А потом опять на первый, э, на первый и второй. Либо мы это делаем в другом порядке, справа налево. Результат должен быть один и тот же. Значит, получается некоторое чудовищное уравнение. Чудовищное, потому что совершенно непонятно, как его решать. И всякий раз, когда находится решение уравнения Янга Бакстера, новое, это какое-то чудо. И никакого такого стандартного механизма, во всяком случае, я не знаю, который позволял бы выписывать все такие решения. Что-то вот такое странное, пока еще плохо, недостаточно изучено. Но имеется огромное количество примеров, в том числе для всех неприводимых представлений о ВСО-2 известны такие yeah, so I think I didn't draw the correct picture here. So the, the intersections should be in a different way. So the, this is the right picture. It corresponds both to this young boxer's equation and to this bread relation. And so there, there is some so there exists some rule on uh, which allows to construct this R matrix for for uh, different representations of SL two, and then we can obtain this uh, generalized colored Jones polynomial. And I believe the similar procedure there is a similar procedure for for complex polynomial, uh, and that's uh, 
that's that allows us to talk about color of Jones polynomial. So now let's move back to FK invariant. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, so for this, we need another property of another property of color Jones polynomial, which is called uh, Melvin Morton Razansky expansion. Um, so what is it? So now we have our colored, our colored Jones polynomial, which denotes by GR of K and it's invariable Q. And for such a polynomial, we can, um, instead of Q, for some physical reasons, I don't know, we can put uh, e to the power h bar. And then more, Melvin, Morton, and Razansky conjectured the theorem that such, uh, such a polynomial in the small neighborhood of uh, h bar equals zero can be written with the following series. So here we have some something coming from exponent and the coefficient is the following. Oh. Let me comment a bit, if you... Where... Давайте я немножко прокомментирую. Yes. Значит, вообще, если мы берем какие-то полиномиальные инварианты узлов, там, многочлен Джонса, многочлен э, Хомфли, э, то мы не можем про них сказать, что они являются инвариантами конечного порядка. И они не их коэффициенты по отдельности инвариантами конечного порядка не являются. Однако имеется теорема, которая утверждает, что все эти инварианты сводятся к инвариантам конечного порядка. Вот сведение ровно так и осуществляется. Мы заменяем аргумент Q, который, от которого зависит наш многочлен, на на экспоненту от э, малого параметра. Этот малый параметр э, почему-то всегда считается э, постоянной планка. Считается, видимо, что постоянная планка настолько мала, что э, ее э, можно универсальным образом э, э, ставить в любые такого рода разложения. Видимо, в этом есть физический смысл. Но физического смысла, я скажу, настоящего здесь не знаю. И мы раскладываем по этому малому параметру, по ступеням э -э, постоянный план. Такого рода разложения встречаются в нашей науке постоянно, и э -э, коэффициенты этих разложений играют важную роль. Вот коэффициенты вот этого разложения уже являются инвариантами конечного порядка. Коэффициент при h в степени g, он является порядком, он является инвариантом узлов порядка не выше g. И все соответствие между вот этими полиномиальными инвариантами и инвариантами и весовыми системами, функциями на ходовых диаграммах, оно строится вот для этих коэффициентов, коэффициентов этих отложений. Это не, не коэффициенты исходных многочленов, э, а это вот коэффициенты вот этих вот. Зиза, э, 
the uh, finite type, type not invariants are the coefficients of the expansion of the power series expansion of this uh, invariance, polynomial invariance under the substitution, uh, under the exponential substitution. Okay. Actually, I'm not sure that I understand this because the coefficient we have here actually depends on h because the x we have here is the exponent again. Mm -hmm. So it's it looks like some strange kind of expression. Uh, maybe you are right, but uh, morally I am correct. But uh, this is indeed a bit strange expansion. It's not a power series expansion. Yeah, it's not a power series. Yeah, it's um, it's yeah. some it's some weird way to, to write down this uh, Jones polynomial. I don't know, but it exists and it was conjectured by, by these uh, mathematicians, but it, it's like the only way, the only thing in this lecture that was indeed proven because later we will have only conjectures. And it was proven by uh, Barnatan and uh, Garofaldis in 1994. Uh, yeah, so uh, also I didn't mention that this delta k is Alexander polynomial. I will not define it. Uh, yeah. Well, we because... I um, yeah. okay. uh, yeah, I'll, I'll find it. Maybe. Okay, so we have this exp uh, expansion and FK invariant is actually almost, almost just this polynomial, uh, almost this, um, this series, except that here we have some specific X and the conjecture is that there is some kind of uh, not invariant, which 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 is precisely with this expansion. Expansion, so it's two variables. It's in x uh, and q. Um, no, no. Let let me write it precisely. Sorry. So conjecture. The conjecture is the following. So there exists fk of x and q, which is of the form So there is some, uh, some I don't know, series, which is called FK, uh, and it's in two variables, X and Q, such that it has uh, integer coefficients, which are in this uh, polynomial, Lorentz polynomial FM, such that if we substitute Q equals to EH, we will have almost the same expansion we had above, up to some uh, some some multiply. So what's, what's going on here? Um, so the statement is actually, so here we have precisely the same polynomials P we have here. So this, 
what is the conjecture? What is conjecture? The conjecture the existence of these polynomials. Uh, yeah. The, the difference is, I, I already said it, but the difference is that in John's polynomial, we had uh, some specific x. And so if we substitute th this x we had here, we obtain gain the John's polynomial. That's why it's some generalization of it. But what is needed to be proven is the existence of this fm. And what is wonderful is that it seems that the coefficients of this polynomial are integers. Um, and this was conjecture, maybe it was before 2021. And it's by some of the authors from the paper, um, on the main paper on which the talk is based. It's by Gukov and uh, I don't remember who else, um, but th this is some not invariant which comes from another more general uh, invariant of now three three-dimensional manifolds Z, сейчас, which I'm not going to talk about. Это гипотеза для какого-нибудь узла доказана, кроме тривиального. Yeah, okay. I, I will I will have some examples later. Uh, so I'm almost sure that for all uh, toric nodes it's proven. Um, for example, for trefoil. We need an example simply to understand what is the assertion of the conjecture. Yeah. yeah, so here here I didn't succeed to find an example of uh, these um, colored Jones polynomials. And for like, I, I need both of them, right? I need some, some polynomial, um, some, some not for which I have both of these, these invariants and I didn't um, find it yet. But for, for trefoil, it's definitely proven. Uh, maybe, maybe it's, maybe I have example, but I'm not sure. Я боюсь, что если мы не увидим примера, то мы не поймем, в чем состоит утверждение. No, what, like the, the, the statement is, the statement is clear, no? We have this, the statement is, is there exist this polynomials fm with integer coefficients such that if we substitute instead of x, each of the power r, r h, then we obtain the Jones polynomial. I don't know. I like all the examples of these FK invariants. They are really, really complicated. So nothing. I, when when you look at these the precise series of this FK invariant, they are really huge, mm -hmm. and it's even complicated to do something with these expressions. I see. Okay, let, uh, then this continue, and we will see. <coughs> Yeah, so maybe maybe now it's time for some example. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, for this one. Uh, so this is, um, so we have figure eight not, which, which looks like this. And for this not, we can write down the, um, it's FK invariant in in some specific form. So the form we have here 
depends on some matrix C. Um, the matrix is 6 and 6, yeah? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And the sum goes from 1 to infinity. And we also have um, some specific some specific um, symbol here, which I'll explain uh, when I come to queers. So all, all this, this expression actually comes from not queers correspondence. And uh, there are, here we have even different matrices. So I have no idea how can one work with these expressions. Uh, what is how, the, how can we even see? What, is, what are the dots in this matrix? Zeros. No. There are too many zeros. Why it should be? Uh, даже сумма двух квадратов не держит. Uh, значит, есть 6 на 6 матрица. Uh, uh, вы говорите, что любая из них подходит, да? Yeah, but so what we have here is actually we have different x, which somehow depends on a and q. Uh, and а, а, all these не... matrices. Вы еще не сказали, что такое x, да? Yes. Окей. Okay. Это не одна матрица, да? Это не одна матрица. Это те матрицы, которые стоят вот здесь вот. Тут минус q в степени 1 вторая, еще э, в степени равной э, какому-то, какой-то квадратичной форме. От... Э, от э, индексов до 1, до 6, которые меняются от единицы до бесконечности. Ну вот непроизвольно. Вот, вот утверждается, что эти три формы, что эти три квадратичные формы подходят, но для каждой из них мы должны по-своему написать, что такое x1, x2, x6. So actually it's not true. So they have the same, the same, I, I'm not sure that I understand how it could be. Yeah, but they have the same, um, X1 to X6. And it looks like this. So yeah, here we have A and here we have Q, so it all depends on this one. But uh, that's this, something this that... for the first matrix, yeah? No, it's for all of the matrices. Ah, то есть для всех для всех матриц X и Y все одинаковые, да? Yes. So this this is something that I'll talk about later because this, this matrix is corresponds to a queer which is in Russian Kalchan and this uh, this series in, in this way is something that um, started in, in the theory of, of queers and uh, so the, uh, this expression comes from a quiver, yeah, or from three different quivers. No, 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 Вот облада... можете вернуть слайд, на котором написано то свойство, которым их должен обладать. Ага. Вот, что существует 
А кто здесь нечетный в том, что вы написали? А? И, и чему равны многочленные ФМ маленькое? Это можно? I, 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 I don't know. Нет, я не, не, не знаю, в смысле. Я серьезно не вижу, не, не вижу, как они переходят а, от одного к другому. То есть кажется, что для подсчета каждого этого инварианта пишется отдельная статья, в которой считается, например, для узлов, не знаю, два, сейчас как они называются, литарических узлов с числами 2, 2 по плюс 1. Вот, значит, для этого пишется отдельная статья, в которой э, я думаю, что они явно не выписывают, как выглядят эти многочлены F, M и Q. Э, но они там как-то доказывают, что оно действительно удовлетворяет э, вот этому, что, что оно имеет вот такое разложение. Окей, okay, uh, uh, so But will you please explain uh, what aquivas? Exactly. Yeah. Sure. How can we obtain from aquivas such expressions? Yes. So, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, so, what is a quiva? It's something that will allow us to write down the uh, expressions for conjecture will allow you to write down the expressions for home fly polynomial and uh, FK invariants. Quivers. So quivers in Russian is Kalchen, and it's just uh, a directed graph. It could have, it can have uh, multiple uh, edges and it can have loops and it can have many loops and it shouldn't necessarily be uh, an accident, yeah, thank you. And each vertex, so they, they didn't write about it, but for each vertex, vertex we, put some variable x1, x2, xn. And what we usually do with queers in general, we have some uh, set of the rules. How can we change both these variables and these arrows? And then we change the queer according to these rules and look on the variables we have. So it's general what we do, but not in this case. Um, Uh, есть еще операция мутации, которая uh, преобразует этот колчан, uh, преобразует этот граф, uh, который лежит в его основе, и uh, переменные, которые стоят в его вершине. Вот uh, uh, эти колчаны uh, вместе с, мутаци с возможными мутациями являются основным предметом изучения теории кластерных хаос. Но э, понятно, что за этим, э, ну, за этим уже стоит некоторая геометрия, но понятно, что э, э, геометрическая природа колченого должна быть более глубокой. Э, и вот, э, это одна из, одно из направлений, в котором эта глубина должна появляться. Окей. Okay. Yeah, so here we will not have uh, any mutations, but there will be something that looks like this. So uh, when we have a queer, one can um, look at their presentations, which is just 
uh, some correspondence uh, such that for each vertex we put some uh, vector space c to the power g a and here's the power g2 and between these vector spaces the arrows give different maps and this is called the representation of the curve corresponding to the dimensions d1 d m and for each such um, curve one can write the motivic generating And this is precisely what we have for эти индексы d и t нужно воспринимать как размерности пространств, стоящих в вершинах колчана. Да? Мы вот функция f это есть результат суммирования по всем таким наборам размерности. Да? Yes. Oof, oof, oof. Oh, I, I forgot to say something. Yeah. So uh, if we have a queer, in general, if we have a graph, we can uh, construct a, an adjacent C matrix for it. And this will be matrix C, which we haven't had in in the example. So it's a matrix which uh, entry IG is just the number of arrows going from A to G. Uh, uh, so some examples. Yes. Yeah, so there is a specific kind of queers, which is of a queer, which is which seems to be the the best one, the easiest one, the representations of the, the these queers which are symmetric are known much better than the um arbitrary for an arbitrary curve and the, the symmetric curve is just the one that has the symmetric adjacency matrix in other words it has the same number of arrows going from i to g and to from g to i so like like this and uh so not queer correspondence uh, talks only about the queers with symmetric uh, adjacent symmetries. And from now on, we will talk only about this kind of queers. OK, and then if we have this matrix CIG, then we can write um, the generating function so here we need some something to describe so first of all the the, the first um, part of it is quite simple we just take uh, minus q to the power one half and then to the power of some some um, quadratic form uh, yeah and one why we have here one half because uh, cij is symmetric matrix so for example if we have something simple like one two then the adjacency matrix is uh one one zero 
And so what we have here is just one half and then And you can see that each uh, summoned, except for the diagonals, will appear twice. So it's sufficient to divide by two. That's why we have the one half. And what's written after the, this expression is the following. So this bold x to the bold d is a usual notation for the product of xi to the power gi. And in the denominator, we have something more complicated. So it is one minus, oh, I don't remember this one. Uh, maybe plus. No, it's okay, yeah. So in the denominator, we have some huge product of these, these numbers of these polynomials in Q. And, and this, is, this is the way to write the generating function for the symmetric curve. And so, we were going towards the not queers correspondence. So the, there is a conjecture. Polina, may, may I ask you? That. <clears throat> Polina, whether mm -hmm. function enumerates something. Yes, yes, yes. What does it enumerate? Cycles? Uh, Для чего это производящая функция? Это количество циклов в этом графе данной длины или что? Вот. So they say just that this is a sufficient way to think about the curve in terms of which representations it has. Функции oh. такого вида обычно называются или являются z-функциями, и они что-то что что так, так и перечисляют. Мне так трудно сходу сказать, что должна перечислять эта производящая функция, но я совершенно не исключаю, что она что она перечисляет действительно какие-то циклы э, заданной длины, что ее коэффициенты – это количество циклов, имеющих, идущих по, э, ори... по ориентации. Не знаете, да? Mm. А, может быть, ну, лучший способ посмотреть вот на этом примере, когда есть две точки 1 и 2. Да. Смотрите, что там будет. Но я не пробовала. Сереж, не похоже как-то. Не похоже, да? Это не то, что у нас с тобой было. Если бы там произведение матричное было, CIJ, оно как-то... Они как между собой не зацеплены в этом разложении. Хорошо. Ладно. Окей. So it's a mystery why do they write I don't know. I, I don't understand this. How how this denominator appears at all? So it's mm -hmm. some, um, yeah, some formula. They they actually have also uh, a really short way to write it down using some special exponent. Mm -hmm. Some 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 function which looks like exponent, and there is some. Some theory about this pretty the same as the theory about the exponential function, but it's more complicated. And maybe that's why they use precisely this this denominator. Yeah. So the conjecture about this generating function uh, for the curve 
And let's just say about a K invariant. So the conjecture is that um, FK invariant can be written in the way uh, using this motivic generation function. Uh, so let me, uh, I think it's okay. So with instead of instead of x, we should substitute some specific. Excuse me, I'm. Sorry, yeah, sorry for the interruption. Um, yeah, so everything is not okay. Everything is not okay. So we can take. The uh, I I believe it calls the A deformation of FK invariant. So it's some generalization of FK invariant such that if we put A equal one, we have changed the, the usual one. And then uh, if we substitute instead of x i x to the power and i equal i i uh so this statement for each node k there exists some uh, symmetric matrix c such that uh, the, the FK invariant will be just the substitution for some specific X uh, into the into the material generating function for for this for this specific query. So. It's, uh, это, это гипотез... it's kind of provide. Sorry, Polina. Это гипотеза и есть гипотетическое yes. соответствие узлы э, толчаны, да? Uh, half of it. Like there is a second one which uh, gives a correspondence between home fly polynomials and quirks, which looks the same way. So. We have some substitution into the. Uh, first of all, we have some queer, and then we have some substitution uh, in the material generating function for this queer, such that the generating function we obtain is a um, home fly polynomial for a given knot. Гипотетически есть какой-то инвариант FK. Мы не знаем, твердо есть он или нет. Мы предполагаем, что он есть. И надеемся на это. Есть далее по каждой матрице, по каждой симметрической матрице мы можем написать многочлен ПК. Да? Ну, многочлен это ряд такой здоровый. По каждой симметрической Матрица целочисленной, мы можем написать такой здоровый ряд ПК. И э, вот это, это мы можем сделать, для этого нам ничего кроме матрицы не надо. То есть э, у нас должен быть колчан симметричный, который, и эта матрица соответствующая этому колчану. Они друг друга взаимно определяют, и больше нам ничего не надо. И гипотеза, что есть такое, что для, для гипотетического многочлена ФК существует такая специ... существует такой колчан, существует такой колчан С, и такая специализация переменных XIT, да, что там это же набор 
Н и Т, Л и Т, который тоже должен откуда-то взяться. А, такая... yeah, they... Что вот этот гипотетически существующий инвариант ФК при такой подстановке совпад... получается из, из ряда ПК. Mm -hmm. При этом это, видимо, все совершенно неоднозначно, да, то есть мы можем разные матрицы брать, разные колчаны и разные наборы показателей N и элиты. Yes. Да, да, да. Соответствие в одну сторону. Да. Это... Mm -hmm. да, причем там даже есть какие-то попытки описать, как именно, какие именно бывают разные возможности для этих колчанов. В смысле, что если у нас есть два разных колчана, которые соответствуют одному и тому же услу, как мы можем перейти от одного колчана к другому? Но, скажем, мутация меняет этот ряд, да? И она может его испортить. Она может, она может ряд ассоциированный с узлом испортить и сделать его. Ну, то есть у них происходит какая-то не, не мутация, а они там как-то добавляют еще. Я, может, сейчас расскажу еще. Или нет? Скажите, да. Окей. Окей. Просто, so... просто чтобы понимать, в чем состоит, состоят эти гипотезы. Окей. Yeah, so there is the, the one example I think is a nice one. Uh, and it's about the trifoil. So we, we want to write the, uh, the expression for the FK invariant for, for trifoil. And uh, we want to write it in this not correspondence way. And so we need to find some matrices C. And they provide two different matrices. So again, the dot in the matrix is just zero. Uh, and other entries in this matrix are either one and minus one, which is actually all also a little bit strange because first they talk about uh, the some some queries and some errors between the uh, the the vertices, but instead they just consider uh, not only positive entries of this matrix but the negative as well. So instead of uh, having different number of um, errors between two vertices, we have one edge with some weight, which could, which is integer, but should be either, yeah, which is integer, but it could be less than zero. Um, yeah, so they have two different, there are two different ways to write down this expression for two different matrices and for two different uh, specializations for x, y. And there is a way uh, how to go from, so, so the, there is in general the way how, how we can change the matrix and the specialization such that uh, the expression will change. And there are, they find there are three different ways how to change it. They call the unlink link and uh, redundant pair. In first two cases, uh, we add another vertex. So if we have at the beginning some queer Q, we obtain new one, uh, Q prime, uh, which has one additional node, um, which is called N. So 
let let the first uh, curve be on n minus one vertices. So the queer Q prime will have n vertices. And then, so we, we, we draw a vertex five here, and then we change the edges a little bit. So all the edges between i and j uh, such that I is not equal to n, j is not. Oh, okay. So unlink goes with respect to uh, two specific um, vertices in, in, in the uh, curve that denote them by a and b. So, for example, it could be uh, two and four. So we fix these two points. And if i and j are not equal to uh, n and they are not equal to a and b, uh, then we just leave this edge as it was. Uh, but if uh, we have, so if we take the edge between a and b, for unlink, I think uh, we just uh, delete one one edge. In other words, we if we're talking about the matrix, we substitute one, uh, sub subtract one. Yeah, and then so it's the first rule. The second rule is that if we have I n. Then I need to check because the for unlink and link it's uh, different. Yeah, so for I um, it looks like this. C I E. So what do we have here? We have this new vertex five, and we have an arbitrary i, uh, which could be even a or b. And so we take the sum of the entry, the, the number of edges between a and i, the number of edges between b and i, add them, and then if i is equal either a and b, we need to subtract one. And, uh, oi. So another rule is, so in this rule, i shouldn't be equal to n, but if i is equal to n, then it's, the following and these are all the ways we should change the matrix but we also need to change the entry uh, which we almost will not change so in 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 all the vertices we had xi but now we have the new uh, variable xn so this new variable xn will be just xa times xb times uh, q to the power minus one. Uh, yes. And similar things happen for, for the link. So we again choose two uh, vertices a and b, and we add another new vertex n. And for this vertex, the new variable will be just the product of x a and x b. And then we change the matrix in a similar way, just we do not change the number of 
edges between A and B. Uh, so it's it's a little bit simple, simpler. So we don't have these deltas. And for this, we don't uh, we don't need to subtract one. Okay, that's almost right, but here we actually should add one. One so here should be plus one. And the redundant pair is the following rule. So if we have if we have a pair A and B such that uh, so what are the rules? What are the rules? X A is equal to Q X B C A. Then we can just uh, delete these two vertices and obtain the matrix. If we had matrix uh, n minus one times n minus one, we will have another matrix n minus three times n minus three. And using these rules, um, we for sure can obtain two different um, queers with uh, the same motivic generating function. But it is not proven, and it's probably not true, that uh, these are the only rules we have in order to have um, to, to, to understand whether the two queers indeed give the same generating function. And so there is an exercise which says that we can indeed uh, obtain the second matrix from the first one. And what we need to do is first we need to take two and four vertices and, uh, and link them. Then one and three. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so there are three steps how to come from the first one to the last one. So we need to link two and four, then we need to again link to one and four. Mm -hmm. And then the, it turned out that prayer to three will be redundant so we can remove it. Yeah, so at the beginning we had matrix four by four, then we had here we have matrix five by five. Mm -hmm. Then here we have matrix six by six, and then we remove two rows and two uh, uh, columns and get four by four. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, yeah, so maybe I need to, to do something here, like, or leave it as an exercise. Uh, yeah, I believe we uh, have to stop. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah, may I ask about this FK uh, invariant? So I understood that like it's a nice tool to conjecturally connect all this, all this also nice guys together, but uh, does it have some, any independent uh, interest? So do, do, do you know? So, so what they write, they write that there is some uh, much more general invariant which is not a not invariant, but just three three D manifold invariant, which is called Z invariant. Mm -hmm. And they also conjecture its existence from some physical reasons, and I do not know them. But this 
fk invariant uh, is actually the value of this z invariant in for the manifold uh, three dimensional sphere minus not and so uh, first they're trying to doesn't, understand what any compactness not the average yes то, что мы делаем хирургию э, трехмерной сферы по узлу, получаем компактное многообразие, считаем его уже с крышечкой на вариант. Вот. Окей. So, so they first try to understand whether this FK exists. And uh, I think the main goal uh, for, for Gukov and others is to understand what is this z invariant for an arbitrary manifold three-dimensional okay uh this crushing invariant on to конечно конечно more questions comments no thanks um thanks polina